China is the most competitive market. Over the past 18 months, KTL and BYD have tightened their grip on low-cost, high-output battery production, forcing Tesla to rethink every assumption that once gave them an engineering lead. Aluminum ion is emerging as Musk's counterpunch, a chemistry that promises ultra-fast charging, cooler operation, and cost-per-kilowatt-hour numbers that could finally undercut China's advantage. I don't really think about competitors. I just think about making the product as perfect as possible. But what exactly is Elon hiding behind this sudden aluminum ion pivot? Can this new chemistry realistically survive real-world heat, winter cold, daily fast charging, and the demanding long-distance habits of U.S. drivers? Those are the questions we'll break down in today's video. Before we dive in, Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so Auto Gear Shift can finally hit 19,191 subscribers. The oddly satisfying number that unlocks our next deep dive series on Tesla's hidden prototypes. If you subscribe right now and push us past that number, you'll officially be part of the group that broke the countdown. What makes aluminum ion a real threat to China's battery dominance in 2026? The real disruption begins with the chemistry itself. Aluminum ion cells store and release energy through multi-electron reactions, allowing them to move nearly three times more charge carriers per cycle compared to today's lithium-based cells. On paper, this means a compact 45 to 55 kilowatt hour pack for the 2026 Model 2 could hit charging speeds once thought impossible. Early lab samples from Tesla's Australian research partners show full charge cycles completed in under 10 minutes, with smaller 6 to 12 Ott cells regularly hitting peak currents above 7,500 milliamp hours without thermal spikes. These small cell numbers don't directly translate to a full vehicle pack, but they offer a target that Chinese LFP suppliers cannot match without a total redesign of their factories. China's current supply chain still leans heavily on LFP, with CATL and BYD each producing over 320 gigawatt hours worth of iron phosphate cells annually. These cells are cheap and safe, but they saturate at lower energy density, struggling to push past 165 to 175 watt hours per kilogram in mass production. Aluminum ion, at least in Tesla's projections, could realistically enter production at 185 to 210 watt-hours per kilogram once the casting and electrolyte stabilization process scales. Even if the official number lands near the lower end, it still gives Tesla a measurable advantage in pack mass, vehicle weight, and acceleration. A critical selling point in markets where buyers care more about real-world performance than chasing the cheapest EV possible. The bigger story, however, is cost. Aluminum is the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust, with prices per metric ton hovering between 1,900 and 2,300 USD over the past year, less than a third of the price volatility seen in high-grade lithium carbonate. If Tesla shifts even 40% of its small car lineup to aluminum ion by late 2026, the company could shave 400 to 700 USD off battery pack material costs per vehicle. That number may seem small, but in the sub-$30,000 segment, it determines whether Tesla beats or loses to China's aggressively priced EV imports. Yet, no chemistry arrives without hidden complications. Aluminum ion cells generate heat faster during high current charging, especially in packs smaller than 50 kilowatt hours. Their internal resistance spikes when the anode receives repeated rapid ion loading, which means Tesla must redesign thermal loops originally built around lithium packs. This is where the real engineering work happens. Musk's teams have been quietly testing dual-phase cooling plates and compressible thermal interfaces, trying to keep aluminum ion temperatures stable within a narrow 29 to 41 degrees Celsius band during fast charging. If they can control this, aluminum ion becomes more than just a lab success it becomes a manufacturing weapon, one powerful enough to slow China's dominance just as the US EV market enters a new price war. How fast can Tesla scale aluminum ion for the 2026 lineup? 
scaling aluminum ion isn't as simple as dropping a new chemistry into the existing 4680 production lines. Tesla's current dry electrode coating process was designed around lithium-based slurries, meaning aluminum ion requires a completely different approach. Thicker anode layers, faster electrolyte saturation, and a graphite-free structure that needs tighter humidity control. Internal briefings suggest Tesla is preparing a hybrid line capable of producing both 4680 lithium packs and a new 4080 aluminum ion format. The smaller diameter allows faster cooling through a shorter thermal path, which is essential when your peak charge rates exceed anything used in today's mass-market EVS. Even with redesigns, Tesla's projected ramp is far more aggressive than what they attempted with early 4680 lines. Supplier leaks from Nevada and Shanghai point to a combined pilot line output of 8 to 12 gigawatt hours in late 2025, scaling to 38 to 45 gigawatt hours by the end of 2026. To put that into perspective, that volume is enough to power 750,000 to 900,000 Model 2 class vehicles but only if Tesla achieves yields above 85%, something they historically struggled with during the first two years of 4680 production. Musk's advantage now is that aluminum ion uses lower temperature annealing and faster electrolyte injection, reducing cycle time per cell by nearly 40 to 55 seconds compared to lithium cells. Over millions of units, that difference converts directly into higher throughput and lower per unit capex. Tesla's decision to position this chemistry specifically for compact cars isn't random. A smaller 45 to 55 kilowatt hours aluminum ion pack charges so quickly that Tesla must rethink how superchargers handle peak loads. If a standard stall supports 250 kilowatts, Next-generation aluminum-ion sessions could demand momentary surges well above 320 to 350 kilowatts, even for entry-level models. This shifts the burden upstream. New cable liquid cooling, upgraded rectifiers, and improved grid buffers will all be required. Tesla's move to expand its U.S.-made Megapack installations near high-traffic supercharger locations hints that they already anticipate these loads, especially in regions where older grid infrastructure can't tolerate sudden spikes every time a dozen Model 2 owners plug in simultaneously. The real wildcard is durability. Fast charging cycles above 300 kilowatts raise questions for anyone who drives long distances several times a month, especially older drivers who value reliability over raw speed. Tesla's internal cycling tests show that aluminum ion retains 78 to 82 percent usable capacity after 1,800 high stress cycles, compared to lithium LFP packs that average 2,500 cycles before dipping below the same threshold. While the difference seems significant, Tesla argues that aluminum ion is built for shorter charge times, meaning real world drivers accumulate stress cycles at a slower rate. In practical terms, most owners would still cross 280,000 to 320,000 kilometers before noticing any major reduction in range. What real-world changes will drivers notice if aluminum ion replaces lithium in 2026? For most drivers, the first noticeable change won't be the chemistry hidden inside the pack. It will be how radically different the charging experience feels. Today, a typical 50 to 60 kilowatt hour LFP pack in an entry level EV needs 28 to 35 minutes to charge from 10% to 80% at a high speed station. With aluminum ion, Tesla aims to cut that window down to 9 to 11 minutes for the same energy transfer. This isn't a minor convenience upgrade, it fundamentally changes how people plan road trips. Instead of waiting long enough to finish a meal, drivers over 50, who often prefer shorter breaks, will find charging stops aligning naturally with restroom or coffee breaks. Tesla has been targeting a charging curve that stays above 180 to 200 kilowatts for most of the session, instead of tapering early like lithium-based chemistries. The next shift comes from temperature stability. Aluminum ion cells operate in a narrower thermal band, forcing Tesla to integrate a more sophisticated heat management system. 
Early prototypes use a two-layer cooling plate with microfluidic channels, enabling rapid extraction of heat during the first minutes of ultra-fast charging. Even in high ambient temperatures, 37 degrees Celsius and above, the pack is engineered to stay below 41 degrees Celsius, which is the threshold at which aluminum ion begins to degrade faster. For drivers living in hotter states like Arizona, Nevada, or Texas, this could mean the first compact EV that maintains consistent charge performance even during extreme summer heat waves. Tesla claims this system improves peak cooling efficiency by nearly 20% in thermal load tests compared to Model 3's traditional cooling manifold. Range consistency is another area where drivers feel the difference. While aluminum ion may not match the longest range lithium nickel packs, its predictable discharge profile means the drop-off in cold weather is less severe. Preliminary winter tests at minus 12 degrees Celsius show that aluminum ion packs lose roughly 11 to 14 percent efficiency, whereas many LFP packs lose 18 to 25 percent under the same conditions. For commuters in northern states or Canada, this translates to fewer surprises on freezing mornings and more predictable winter driving. Acceleration also receives an indirect improvement. Because aluminum ion packs weigh slightly less, Tesla estimates 8 to 12 kilograms lighter for a 50 kilowatt hour pack, the reduced mass lowers the load on the drive motors. The difference may be subtle during city driving, but at highway speeds, shaving even a few kilograms off rotational inertia improves efficiency and passing performance. Tesla expects the 2026 Model 2 equipped with aluminum ion to complete 0 to 60 miles per hour in the 6.1 to 6.5 second range, edging ahead of similarly priced Chinese imports that typically hover in the 7.0 to 8.2 second band. That's all for today. Do you think Tesla can outscale China, or is the gap already too wide? Share your thoughts below. Your perspective helps shape our upcoming deep dives. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss the next update here on Auto Gear Shift. The next episode is already in the works, and you won't want to miss it.